Hello Monaco, today we are the guest at Rocket Venturi racing team at their home in Monaco and we will talk with Norman Nata, one of the Hello. most important members of the team, Formula E racing driver. Yes, exactly. Norman, we will start like from the beginning. Tell us who brought you into the motorsport? I started at the age of uh, six years old. My father was a rally driver and uh, yeah, so I'm uh, like in general passionate about rally and cars. But uh, yeah, I've tried uh, for the first time uh, a karting uh, at the age of six and I started to, to race at nine and from there I never stopped. What about your parents? I think it's a quite risky, quite risky, I would say, job <laughs> to be a, a racer driver. Like how your mom deal with it? Yeah, you know, it's always a compromise. Like your father is pushing for it and <laughs> your mom is like, hey, go carefully and don't go too fast. Uh, but you know, like when you're passionate about something, your parents they ju just want the, the best for you. So, for sure, my uh, my parents are scared because you know it's a, we all know it's a dangerous uh, sport. But this is what I like, and this is what is exciting as well in our in our job. So I would say that yeah, my mum, like for example, she came on Saturday for the race. Uh, she don't really come so often because uh, she's a bit worried about like seeing this car going so fast and fighting. But uh, yes, at the end now she's, uh, she's used to it. It's part of my job and it's part of my life. Did you remember what was your first car? Yes, I remember uh, what was my first car. I broke it after 10 days, so <laughs> it didn't last long. <laughs> but it, what was it? It was a um, Volkswagen. Ah, it was like the first car of my, of my mother. So like she, she gave it to me for the beginning mm -hmm. and she said, well, take care of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I didn't, so <laughs> she was not really happy. What was your like, a career toward to Formula E? No, like Formula E, is, uh, it's, uh, it's new for me. It's my first year, uh, so I'm a rookie. Um, in the previous years, I was like a reserve driver for the team, so for Rocket Venture Racing. I spent two years like uh, trying to help the team and uh, if one driver has, uh, has, uh, couldn't race for any reason, I was the one who would jump in the car to replace. And uh, last year, um, Felipe Massa decided to, to stop Formula E, so uh, the team chose me to, to put in the car for, for this season. So it's my really first season in Formula E. And before that, I was uh, doing like uh, Formula 2 and so single-seater. And uh, in parallel, I am also doing uh, endurance championship, as a world endurance championship with the 24 hours of Le Mans. So I'm doing Formula E and endurance championship. But how the Formula is different from another one? Ah, it's uh, different in many things, like we are only racing in street circuits. Uh, it's uh, the only championship in the world where this kind of uh, championship is only based like in, in the city. And uh, also the car is really different. We have an electrical engine, uh, which is completely different than what we are used to. And the way you drive the car and your driving style change as well. So yeah, it's a lot to learn and to, to discover when you're entering this championship. What a beautiful car. Roman, tell us about it. What is it? What does make it so special? <laughs> yes, so black and white car. This is the color of, uh, of this season for, for our team. So the, the engine, uh, the electrical engine is, uh, co is coming from, uh, from Mercedes. You, uh, you can see it on, in front of the car. And uh, otherwise, yes, this is uh, like you can see in Formula One uh, for safety, the halo, which is quite Im important and new in motorsport. Uh, the engine and the gearbox and everything is at the back of the car, so under the cover. And what else inside, you know, you have, uh, you have like the seat fit, uh, the steering wheel, the pedals are around here. And uh, that's pretty much it, yeah. And this is your number, yeah? Yeah, 71 is my number for this season, yes. Why 71? Uh, because my uh, lucky number is a 17, but it was already taken, so I decided to go for the opposite, so 71. How you decided that 17 is your lucky number? Because since I'm young, I have uh, raced in karting with the 17, and uh, so it's my, uh, it's my lucky number since, uh, since I started in karting. But how many uh, members in, uh, in the Rocket Venturi team? Oh, you see there is uh, some engineers behind us uh, working, uh, but there is some more. We are about more than 30 people in the team. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a lot of people only for, for two cars. Um, the mechanics as well, uh, plenty of engineers because on this car there is a lot to do and a lot to develop. Uh, plus uh, people who are working in the simulator room as well. So yeah, it's a, it's a lot of people working for us. 
how did you feel uh, when you compete in your home, I would say, city, your hometown? Is it uh, like give you more, give you more nervous or no? No, I would say the first time, yes, because uh, you know it's it's Monaco. It's uh, special for every driver. And uh, for me, yeah, when you are young and you f for the first time racing in Monaco, yeah, for sure it's more pressure because you want to do well. Uh, I've competed in Monaco like five times now, so I would say that I know what to expect. I know what to be careful at because you know you are at home and everything. So sometimes you're like, ah, I want to go to the restaurant, or my friends are coming to see me, blah blah blah. And, and it's really important to, to stay focused and to just prepare and do like the other races. But for sure, it's always like a pleasure to, to race in Monaco. But is it true that the Monaco like a track is the one of the most difficult in the world? It depends. It's difficult because it's a street circuit. But for us in Formula E, uh, we are only racing in street circuit. So I won't say that Monaco is uh, the most difficult one in Formula E. Uh, just because you know that everything is just perfect, like <laughs> the wall are, are nicely, nicely done, the, the thermal is really flat, so the curbs are, are smooth. So I won't say it's the most difficult one in Formula E to complete, but it's uh, maybe the one we all like or prefer to, to come and to race in Monaco, yeah, for sure. But do you think that you had a, like advantage before other drivers who was not in Monaco, you know, because you, you have a chance to walk through the streets like during the, your regular life during the day, you know, every corner. Yeah, no, but no, no, <laughs> this is not, uh, this kind of thing is not an advantage. Obviously, like they, a lot of drivers, they, they raced in Monaco in the past. And, uh, you know, we have a simulator, so we are before to arrive to a race uh, events, we are doing a lot of laps in the simulator, so we know the track perfectly. The manager of uh, the Rocket Venturi team uh, is uh, Susan Wolf, woman. Yeah, it's quite uh, unique, I would say. Yeah, in, uh, <laughs> yeah, how do you feel to work uh, with uh, both women? Well, I'm, to be honest, I'm used to it now because I've been part of the team for three years and uh, there is a lot of women working in our team. So, so I would say it's good to have a, to have a mix. Uh, men are, com have, uh, are, are su successful and good in some, uh, in some, uh, some other way, but like the, the women, they bring something different. And I think it's good to have both. And that's why in our team, it's like a family team. I would say we are, we are like team, but friends as well. So that's something which is really cool here. Do you need to be in a special physical condition in order to to compete? Yes, for sure. Uh, you know, being a driver, it's not only driving a car. You have to to prepare mentally, but also physically. So before, like uh, during the off season, for example, like all driver, you have your physical trainer, and we're doing some training comes somewhere in the world uh, to prepare for physically for for the season because when the season is uh, is starting. Uh, it's difficult, you know, to have time to really like uh, train physically as you want. So, but we have to stay in shape. And like for example, my engineer asked me to, to respect uh, one uh, one way during the season. Otherwise, for them, it's changing quite a lot of things on the car setup. So it's important for for us as a driver to to keep the same weight for for the season. You said that it's also very important to be in good mental condition. Before to jump in the car, I like to, to be 100% focused. I like to do my little uh, warm-up. So I'm doing some stretching, I put my music on, and uh, this kind of thing has helped me to, to warm up my body, but also mentally to get like 100% focused on what I have to do. But now we have a lot of new drivers in Formula E and Formula 1. Uh, how do you feel about the new generation? Is it different? from the, I would say, old one. And now in Formula 1, drivers are coming really, really young. Uh, I think Max Verstappen, when you arrived, he was 17. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, that's really early for Formula 1. But I mean, he's showing that he's ready for it and he's, uh, he's uh, in position to maybe win the world title. So at the end, it's not a question of age. It's just like a question of if you're ready for it or not. And how the Rocket Venturi cars and Rocket Venturi racing team different from the other? That's a good question. That's the only team I know in Formula E. So <laughs> <laughs> we're just trying to do the best and uh, not really compare with the other, for sure. Yeah, we're comparing the lap time. Mm -hmm. And when we see that the other are doing something different, if uh, we can uh, do the same or even better, for sure, we'll use it. But otherwise, we just focus on our job and we just try to do the best. Norman, could you explain what is the creature? Is for what for? <laughs> uh, so this is a simulator. 
Uh, so this is the real chassis of the car. Mm -hmm. Inside there is uh, the same uh, seat that I have in reality, which is fitted for me. Uh, the real steering wheel. So at least we know we can practice the procedure and have exactly the same feeling as when we jump in the real car. It's the same for the pedal instead of the car. It's everything is really as it is in the, in the real car for us to feel uh, like home, I would say. Like, you know, when you're jumping from the simulator to the car, to be like 100% uh, comfortable straight away. But does it mean that you spend a lot of time with oh, this yeah. machine? Yeah? yeah, we spend a lot mm -hmm. of time in, in this room. Uh, so this is where I stay and uh, the engineers, they are all behind uh, with mm -hmm. the computer and everything so they can see uh, uh, when I'm driving, they can also uh, give me like some uh, details of things to try. Uh, so I can, I have the radio with me, so they can, I can talk to them. They can talk to me, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, this is where we we spent, I would say, uh, half a year. Oh. Yeah, yeah, because it's uh, it's a lot of time uh, spending in the simulator to develop and to prepare for for the race weekend. You have the emergency button. Yeah, yeah but this for one. What? <laughs> this one is. How do you in, use it? Yeah, it's in case uh, there's a big crash or. Or something which is not working uh, properly with simulators, and you have to press this button. But uh, we don't really use it, so <laughs> it says it's safe. It's safe. Okay. But it's really help you to be prepared, yeah. Yes, it's really helpful. Like uh, all the drivers in Formula E, we spend a lot of time in in this kind of simulator. So, so yes, it's. Uh, I would say it's mandatory if you want to arrive and be ready, because in Formula E we do everything only on one day, so free practice, qualifying, and race. So you have time for nothing, so you need to arrive and everything to be ready. Okay, thank you very much and we wish you. you like a big success next Formula E Championship. We wish you to win, not yes, just in Monaco, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and uh, hope to see you on a pedestal next year, next, uh, next time. <laughs> thank you, thank, thank you very you. much, it was a pleasure to have you today. Thank Merci. you. Thank you.